So both metal plates are welded up now to take the front subframe fixings. Both welded up into place, plug welded and little stitches along the front and backs. Uh, next thing is uh, I'm just drilling the holes now to take the uh, the bolts for the for the subframe, and then that's the um, and that's them done. And then I'll, I'll paint them over, uh, let that dry, and then give it another shots over later on. So that's the front subframe installed. Also with the um, I put it in there with the, um, the the front diff as well. It's just loosely the front diff's just sit resting on its mounts at the moment. I've got to get the uh, the distance right with the um, with the prop installed because uh, there's a little bit of um, leeway with regards to where you mount it actually on the um, on the subframe. So I'll do that properly, tighten all that up once the um, once the once the uh, prop shaft's in. I'll probably do that fairly soon. Next up though will probably be the installation of the um, of the lower arms radius rods all of the front suspension basically yeah making some good progress now okay, so that's the lower arms radius arms uh, shocks and uh, springs on both of the both both sides of the front all right there's not much i can do at the moment because um with the front suspension because i'm waiting for two cv boots for the inner cv joints on the front drive shafts that i want to put on before obviously i finish off the um the front so i'm going to put i've left that for the moment what i've done now is i've i've run the cables um the cables the, the wiring loom for the um for the front for the for the, so for the diff locks for the rear diff locks uh the um the fuel sender and wherever it was a separate loom that came with the donor vehicle um trying to drop the camera here oh, phone um that's that there um i've also put in the um this is the this this lot here it, this carries all the vacuum lines as well for the front and rear diff locks um and takes the vent the vent pipe from the um from the front diff up to the back as well actually i'm not even really sure how that rents whether that vents to um to 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 air or, or what i'll have to look that up but um for the moment it goes to the back the same as the one for the uh the transaxle um that wire you can see wrapped around that it's uh i'm not really proud of that it's just a it's a signal wire from the uh the VSS, the vehicle speed signal that goes from the from the back to the front. I'll, I'll probably change that. I'm not too not too pleased with that. That's just for the um, it's for the ECU, for the vehicle for the Subaru uh, VSS. I think it's called the vehicle speed signal. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, right. So what I've also done is uh, I've welded up a couple of um, a couple of threaded, five millimeter threaded bars up to the uh, up to the chassis there. And I, as you can see, I fitted the um, the cleaned up and repainted um, vacuum reservoir that came with the uh, the donor vehicle. Briefly stop it. I get on my back and and show you this. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to try and source another one of these grommets. You can see it's split there. It still seals where it goes in there. That's just like a like a, a little bit that comes on the top of it, but the whole thing still seals, but obviously it's, it's seen better days and, and needs replacing. Um, it's probably 20, 30 years old anyway, so you can't blame it. Um, this is the, uh, this is the, the vacuum, it goes on to the, uh, the main vacuum lines, uh, up to the front where it's distributed around via the, um, the controls up there. Uh, this is the non-return valve, and this is spliced into, I've just spliced this because this is the original the original uh, vacuum line, obviously, this is a two-wheel drive one. The, the Synchro one <coughs> had a, a T-piece here, which I've lost. I put it somewhere safe, which I do so often. It's so safe, I can't find it. Um, so what I've had to do is I, I bought another another T-piece, um, cut it, uh, just heated it up, pushed it in, it's, and it shrinks back down again. It's nice and tight. Uh, I didn't take it. I thought I thought, took photographs of the way that was all set up on the donor vehicle, but I can't find them either. Um, so anyway, it can't be much different from that. It's, you know, it's not very pretty. It's just it's just up there, but it's not going anywhere. Um, so that's the um, the vacuum line sorted for that. Uh, I've also run, obviously, the one that goes back up to the back up to the engine goes through the chassis rail up there, and I've connected that up to the manifold as well, up to the engine. So um, so that's done, and the, I'm just about to do the front, uh, the front now. Pass it up through the front under the floor where it can um where it'll uh, it'll go to the um to the dash 
to the dashboard and the uh, the controls for the uh, for the diff locks. And while we're talking about vacuum lines, we're connecting up the other end as well to the uh, to the diff lock control panel. And there's the installed diff lock panel, all ready to go. Just a quick word on the um, on the front drive shafts. These are the um, these are the front drive shafts before they go on. I'm um, I'm waiting to um, I'm waiting to fit. Obviously, the um, I'm waiting on the, the 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 inner boots so I can fit the CV joints to there. Uh, just to let you know what I did with these. Um, uh, these were obviously like most drive shafts that are getting on a bit. They were um, they were rusty in places where the paint had been chipped off and and whatever else. So they were cleaned up, blasted and cleaned uh, and um, treated and painted. But what I've also done is I've coated them with um, heavy duty glue lined uh, um, shrink wrap. So basically what they've got is, is like a res fairly resilient plastic coating on top of them as well now. Um, I'd, I'd probably say it's probably even better than, than, um, than powder coating. Anyway, I'll give it a go. It's an idea. Um, it, it, but like I say, it's, it's like having a rubber coating on it really. So we'll see how it goes. It should, um, it should be able to repel the old stone and whatever else so and, and, and worse comes to worse if um i don't know if they twist up or anything like that and they go a bit funny then i can just cut them off and got painted underneath so yeah um so that's that's them um i suppose the eagle-eyed amongst um anyone looking or, or notice that um these two cv joints these front cv joints are different and um yeah it's a bit i'm a bit pissed off about it to be honest with you but it's one of them things is when you use um with any with any any vehicle i suppose that's getting on for 30 years old and has had a number of owners um these sort of things are going to happen what 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 this is 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 um uh right this is a sync the, the 16 inch the 16 inch synchro with the front diff locks had a different had a different had a wider slightly heavier duty i, I should imagine again like most things synchro 16 um front cv joint and um they're also insanely expensive when compared to the the 14 inch one which is which that is um yeah so yeah so what you're asking you probably yourself is why i haven't gone and bought another one of these well i've spent a fortune so far and i just want to get this running and, and, and i'm using the rationale that basically this this band has been driving around for god knows how long with two different flavors of cv joint on the front so if it, another another six months or so isn't really going to hurt while while I, I get this 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 vehicle running and, and fine-tuned and, and, and whatever else um so as long as i don't go do any heavy duty off-roading or whatever then um, i'm sure it'll be fine but it's yeah it's a bit of, it's a bit annoying to be honest with you um you can see the differences you know there there are fairly oh the other thing as well obviously the boots are different as well so to buy two different types of boot which is again which is which is extremely inconvenient um but at least i've got i've got because i bought pairs of each i've got another one of these for when i do buy uh, a, a, a synchro locking cv joint synchro 16 locking cv joint to replace this thing here yeah, so yeah, not ideal. Um, I suppose in the scheme of things, I could have found a lot more while I was going through and and, and, and pulling the, the vehicle apart and, and refurbing all the parts and, and putting them back on. And this is the only really major, major sort of um, thing that's made me scratch my head, I suppose, um, uh, while I've been doing the build. Still annoying though, but it's, it just means I've just got to do a, a little bit, you know, a little bit more work later on. Uh, and, and when I can f try and hunt down a more affordable 16-inch um, synchro locking CV front joint. But, yeah, anyway, enough of that. There you go, there's the engine running. Started her up. Just um, running, the, um, running the coolant through now. You see it's... Um, There at the moment, you see it pumping through. As you can see, it all pumps working quite nicely. Pumping it through the top of the, uh, the tank there. Still got a lot of bits, bits and pieces to do, but I'll still tidy all these cables, and everything, uh, cables and hoses up. But I just wanted for peace of mind, really. I just wanted to get it started up. Um, yeah, I'm pleased with this. a bit noisy but well, it might be the power steering pump as well i've had to um i've put that in a loop the power steering uh leads the power steering hoses are in a loop at the moment because there's no 
no um, no power steering pump connected, so it's just pumping fluid in and in and out. I might be a little bit low, I think, to be honest with you. But um, but yeah, anyway, so um, yeah, happy days. Please for that. Yeah, I love the sound of these engines. It's amazing. Some people, they, I've, I've read, some people don't like the sound of these, but um, I think they sound great. It certainly sounds better than the other engine that was in there. Anyway, the old uh, 1.9 DG very agricultural sounding old engine that but um no i like i like the burble on these and they almost made they look like they're made made for the engine for these these uh these engine bays don't they anyway let's um yeah, i'll top it up with a bit more uh a bit more uh coolant now because that's pumping through torture layer